Hey friends and foes, welcome to Brushwork Podcast. My name is Stephanie Scott, and today I've got a really exciting interview for you. Today, I have Jennifer Arts here on the podcast. She is an abstract painter that I met at the Chateau de Ocopo residency. And today we talked about making your own deadlines, the benefits of having a newsletter, and why you need a great artist website. Jennifer runs a program to help artists make amazing websites. And I think this is going to be particularly good for you, listener. If you've been wanting to make a new website for your art in 2024 and you need some help with it, you're not sure where to go or why to have one or all the itty bitty little gritty things that come with having a great artist website, Jennifer can help you. You can check out our program. I will have it linked in the show notes. And without further ado, here's the interview. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. This is so exciting. Yeah, it's really great. Having fresh work on the road is a first time thing for me. I've never brought the podcast out of my studio before, so this is quite fun. Um, Jennifer, can you tell me about your art and what you do? Yeah, sure. Okay, so I am an abstract artist Mm -hmm. and I make pretty bold pieces of art using loud colors and or black and whites, but strong mark like my I really focus on mark making and conveying energy in my work um sometimes it comes across in littles and sometimes in bigs Hmm. and while we're here at this residency Mm -hmm. uh on the road um I'm working to get more bigs done fun what is the biggest size of painting you like to do Oh, well, so right here it's taking up like my whole studio floor so it must be it's like one meter by two meters. That's big. It's huge. Yeah. <laughs> but it's the first time I'm trying it, so hopefully it'll work out. <laughs> when you are making your abstract work, do you have themes that you like to flow on? Yeah. Well, energy and that feeling that, you know that feeling when you wake up and you've got a project you're excited about yeah. and you get in flow immediately mm-hmm. and you that you just feel, it's kind of like sunshine and lightning all in a bottle. I love it. And that's what I try to convey, like that good, good feeling. Cause I, if I could bottle that and that, that would be so magical for mm-hmm. me. So I try, that's the the feeling I try to convey. Um, sometimes I do things based on water cause I just love the ocean and waterfalls and rivers, like any form of water. Mm-hmm. But I also really love the way the waves move and like that power of it. So it's different than the same energy, but it's related. I like that. It's, does it relate to where you live? You live in California? I'm in California (laughs) and I've lived almost all my life near water and I just seek it. Like it's, I lived on the East coast. I lived on the West coast, like, but I, I I traveled to get into different bodies of water. (laughs) You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. (laughs) (laughs) I live in Seattle and I'm like, if I can't see the water source of any kind, I'm uncomfy. (laughs) Yeah, it feels weird. Like the term landlocked, yeah. like feels weird. And I do love, you know, hiking in mountains and whatnot. But even then, like you find the streams and the cascades and whatnot. Wow, there's a waterfall. Yes. I could have gone that hike. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Where, um, did you go to school for art? Sort of. I did end up going to school for art. But when I was graduating, I thought, I or graduating high school and going into college, I wanted to do special effects in film. Yeah. And so I found a school that had the, one of the first like 3D cubes where you could walk into it and had this immersive thing. Wow. Um, the screen's on, you know, all six sides. But it, in order to use it, I fell into their computer science department. Oh. Which meant I was coding immediately and not doing artwork. Wow. But I kept wandering from that side of campus over to the art and design building. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I, from from that point on, have had a blend of tech and art. So I did end up abandoning the computer science degree and ended up with an art and design degree. Um, but the two have been intertwined in my work ever since. Yeah. Um, and then for grad school, once I so once I got out of school, I strangely didn't really make that much art in the physical world. I fell straight into web design. Interesting. Which morphed into graphic design, but or sorry, morphed into app design. But it was just kind of there's so many jobs when in that when I graduated, and you're still talking color and composition and commu- communication visually, right? Um, but that I felt like I was missing something, so I went back to school for film and then became a filmmaker. So. 
All wow. of my art and communication and expression has been telling stories through some kind of visual medium. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I. It's interesting how things influence us forever. When we make our early choices, we're like, our 20s are for experimenting. But the truth is your 20s are for getting becoming a sponge. And it just, it sits with you for the rest of your life. Yeah, no, it's so true. And it's... <laughs> It's so amazing to see how it translates Mm -hmm. because how you take the same, you know, class will transform your life in one way and it'll transform somebody else's in a completely different different way. Yeah. It's so fun. So (laughs) that's, that's sick. That's sick. I, I I didn't know that you did the filmmaking and that's, that must've been like a huge part of your career. What? So you don't do that anymore, right? Right. So I did do it for a really long time. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I loved it. And one of the things that I loved about it was there's, again, with that, going back to energy, there's an intensity and a, a urgency when you're working on a film, mm-hmm. but that flows away when you're in the pre-production and post-production yeah. part. I mean, there's still urgency, still to finish the project, Yes, but there's a different feel like it's like waves of of the project and so like pre-pro pre-production production and post-production I loved all of that cycling yeah because it allowed me to you know have time when you have way more free time and then you have zero free time and you're hardly sleeping enough and drinking (laughs) pounds of coffee Uh (laughs) do you take the I guess the skills and time management that you learned in filmmaking into your art I try really, really hard. Yeah. I be, and I am a sprinter, mm-hmm. and I absolutely love a deadline, mm-hmm. and I love crazy, ridiculous deadlines because it's something ignites in my brain that I start to pull everything together. Yeah. And and if I don't have that, <laughs> it's projects just like they sit. They sit. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's not that you don't love them. It's just somehow it's so much harder to complete. It's almost addicting having a tight deadline. Yes. It's like, oh, I have a lot of pressure on me, which turns into creative pressure, and you just, you get it done. Yeah. You stop worrying about perfection. You're just like, is it enough for the satisfaction of what I wanted? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so satisfying to get through it. Mm-hmm. For So once I was leaving film and deciding I wanted to just do independent work, because filmmaking and web design – They both are hugely collaborative projects, right? You need a whole crew for either. Right. Um, But when I wanted to work on paintings and just other types of visual art, I really just wanted it to be solo. And that has been very good. But one of the things I really need to, I need to find external deadlines as a motivating factor because when you're just like, I want to make 10 paintings and there's no deadline, but if there's an application due or Mm -hmm. I have a show coming up, Mm -hmm. then instead of 10, maybe I do 20. But without that team, uh, I need, I really do try to seek other deadlines throughout the year to help me get it done. There's no one else holding you accountable except for yourself when you're an artist. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Every artist knows that. There's no boss telling you, okay, it's time to get it done. There's no coworker depending on your work to get their work done. Like... Yeah. <laughs> well, and I feel one of the things that's so fun is exploring different ideas, mm-hmm. but that takes X number of hours, days, weeks, months. Yeah. And if you give it all that time, it might take that much time. It might take that much time. <laughs> ah. Okay. So you're an artist. You've been doing it full time for how long? Uh, two years. Mm. But in fairness, I just started trying to make it a living one year ago. Okay. I, but I, oh, so over COVID, I had a, a, I was working doing um, design. Mm -hmm. And at some point I really, I knew I wanted to focus on art. So I I quit my job before art was my full-time career. And I said, I'm quote unquote returning to school. Yeah. So I didn't go back to get another grad degree. But I took as many classes as possible and gave myself basically my birthday as de- my deadline. I like it. And um, I said, I don't have to worry about selling right now. I just want to really practice. Mm-hmm. And then my very first painting sold the day after my birthday. Congratulations. Thank oh, my you. gosh. That's so that's cosmic almost. <laughs> it felt 
so good. And it was like to a perfect stranger on the internet. <laughs> Which like never happens. I know. That's so good. It was so it was so good and it gave me the confidence in my work. So even though like that first grouping of paintings I yeah. sold or put up for sale, uh, you know, they weren't going to pay my rent, mm -hmm. but just having a few of them start moving, I was like, okay, this I'm ready. I'm ready. You're ready. And then I started to cycle through and make more and more work and look for more and more deadlines. That's awesome. Were you taking when you took your year of classes, were you taking just technical classes or were you taking other kinds of classes? Almost all, well, a little bit of both. Okay. And it was also during COVID. So everything was online. Yeah. And Instagram is so excited to share all of the art class ads with me. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I took some that were like $39. I took um, a, like a flagship course that was the $2,000. Like, wow. So, but I just, I wanted to invest in it as if it were a graduate degree. So, um, but it was just, I took as much as I could do right. to like, to really take it seriously and have some deadlines and structure to mm -hmm. the learning. Mm -hmm. She loves an assignment. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. And I didn't, I'm so contrarian. Like in school, I hated that. Like right. when I was young and now I'm like, somebody please tell me when do you need what? I think that's a good lesson. This wasn't like the point of the podcast I was going to do today, but I do think it's like, if you are the kind of person who needs someone to tell you what to do, it is, there's nothing wrong with finding arbitrary or very real deadlines to get you going. Like, yeah, it works. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and you know all about that with writing. Yes, with writing. Writing is my hobby, but I do NaNoWriMo every year, and you have to get 1,600 words done every day, or else you are so behind, <laughs> and it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, it's, it's a fun project. Anyways, get yourself some deadlines. You Okay, so you took classes. You were like, okay, now I need to start making money and income with your, with your art business. You're selling paintings. Can you tell me about your different income streams? Yes. Okay, so right now it's originals mm -hmm. and an online course. Yes. So my background being from that mix of tech when I started with computer science and graph uh, and sorry art and design, I have been making websites since the dawn of the internet. It feels like mm -hmm. so, um, and I've seen them coming. I've seen platforms come and go. I've seen different methods of making them come and go. Um, but one with everything that has shown up and disappeared and morphed um, with, you know, social media now being a thing, websites have been a consistent place where people can showcase their work and their businesses. So when I started going into art, I met a ton of artists in all these classes and everybody knew I had this background. Right. And the question was, will you make my website? Oh. And it was so hard to say no. Right. Because I could. You could. And I had a business doing it for a very, very long time. Uh -huh. And I feel confident in it. But I didn't, I wanted to make art. Mm -hmm. So I put this course together to teach artists how to make their own websites. That's genius. And you sell that along with your, with your paintings. Yep. That's amazing. Let's, I want to get really into it. Why do you think an artist needs a website? Oh, it's, oh, so it is your own personal gallery. Mm -hmm. It is a place to ex share your work with the world in the way that you want it displayed. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, one of the things that I think is really hard with social media is it feels like we're supposed to use it. And I'm, I'm a fan of social media. Yeah. But things get shown in the way that that platform is going to show them. So, even you know, as basic as orientation, like vertical or horizontal. Yes. It's, you know, like you think movie versus Instagram. Mm -hmm. And and what, what if your art doesn't translate to that? Um, and I just feel that so many people want to consume artwork along with the story that the artist is trying to tell. And to have people pop in and out and see ads and be scrolling – they're not really diving in. And so I want artists to share their work mm -hmm. and and control the story around their work. And then it gives them an opportunity for deadlines. Yes. And uh, an, an income stream mm -hmm. in a much more powerful way, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when Twitter becomes X and everything <laughs> shifts, you don't, you're... 
you you could hop platforms, you could try something new. Like we were just talking about Twitch. Mm-hmm, like there mm-hmm. are so many new ways that we could engage. But if you have a website, then no matter where somebody finds you, they can go get your story. They can go get your story. You don't own Instagram. You don't own Facebook. You don't own any of these platforms. And they can go away at any second, especially if you're making any kind of controversial sort of content. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But you do own a website. (laughs) Yeah. It's yours. Mm -hmm. And because I feel really passionately about it, I have to add this as a disclaimer. I also tell every single person you need a newsletter. Mm -hmm. And it's for that same reason you, you have, when you're ready to say, Hey, I have a new page up, you know, it's either, it could be just like, you could just say, I want you to see the work I made while I was on at this residency. Right. Or it could be, I want you to buy the work. Right. But you, and you can put it up on every social media platform you're on, and maybe people might see it, but if they're your fans, they get your newsletter, they open it. So I am, I think a website and a newsletter are it, like really inseparable. Yes. And then you add the social media on or around that. Totally. The... Whenever someone signs up for my newsletter, they are like the gold star of my clients. Like they gave me my email because they want me to email them. Holy cats. You know, I'm about to email them. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And like every time I put out a, every time I put out an email that's like, hey, I have work up in the shop. I always sell something. Yes. Like every time. And my, currently my email list is not big. It's like barely over a hundred people. And like, it's growing though. And it's great and it works. So get yourself a newsletter. Yes. Now. <laughs> now. And, and I don't teach people how really to use it. And I know there's a lot of people who say you have to do so many emails a month or whatever they say. And they're probably right to some degree, but mm-hmm. I email my list infrequently. Mm-hmm. And only when I actually have news I want to share. Right. And just like you, it always it always gets something. I get a response, mm-hmm. many, often many responses. And it's so engaging. It's so engaging. And they become familiar with you when you're in their email. And it's just, I mean, I've said this like a thousand times on the podcast, but I'm going to say it again. Would you rather open an email from a department store or would you like to open an email from an artist it's so <laughs> yes. much more fun <laughs> yes oh and they're pretty and you love them and it's exciting to see what they're working on <laughs> so good it's so good i teach artists what how to think about their websites mm-hmm. and how to approach it mm-hmm. and and i walk through a lot of the behind the scenes that when you would hire somebody they would already know some of they would they would just apply those things like right. resizing your images, how to make sure you have alt text so that SEO grab or search engine optimization grabs stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But technically, there's things we will walk through and things will you know you could kind of walk through the motions of the actual website build. Yeah, but I I think that the heart of the course is understanding. What I, what I want people to understand is how to have a website that serves them and their art business mm-hmm. and how to how to come up with that. Absolutely. Because you need a plan. Mm-hmm. And so I, I've met a lot of people like, oh, I think I need a website. And you're like, well, I, as, as somebody who says, yes, you do. I yeah. guess you do. But why? Right. And everybody's why is different. And so the course we break down, we, why, how to figure out why you need a website because every single page you add is something you have to pay attention to in your business, which means yes, you're not doing your art while you're paying attention to that thing. Mm-hmm. So it has to serve you. Yes. And I really want people to be clear on what their website needs to do for them, mm-hmm. not a generic, I think I need a website. That's so important the why behind things, why you're doing it, why you're spending time away from the the easel and on your computer it's it's so important you have to think of it in a way that's you can't think of oh i'm going to build myself a website and you know then eventually i'll get back to my easel it's like no i'm building a tool that's going to serve my business because you are a small business owner when you're an artist yes yeah yes and one of the things that i really encourage people to do is launch as soon as possible mm-hmm. cuz you're going to learn immediately and iterate forever. 
Because what you need today is different than what you're going to need next month. Mm -hmm. And I think that I really try to encourage people not to think about it as like a sculpture that is complete and done and not changing. (laughs) How many times have you redone your website? Oh, God. It's never. (laughs) I don't even know how to count. Like it's so frequent. And then the nice thing is once you get it, like you, you know how to do it, then it's it could take like over a cup of coffee and you get your homepage changed because instead of having people buy, uh, you know, some small originals, I'm now moving to, you know, I want, I don't know, prints to come up next. Sure. And so you just, you change the focus and launch and hit publish and you're done. It's easy. Yeah. But it is, it's a living, breathing thing. Mm-hmm. And again, knowing why it serves your business is so important because you don't just want your about page to be perfect and polished. You want to make sure that however people can engage with you and support your business is front and center. And as collections come and go, or if you have a new course or a new video mm-hmm. or um, really any new in- income stream, people are aware of what the thing is right now mm-hmm. that they should pay attention to. Mm-hmm. What are some of the whys that you hear more most often? Why you need a website? You mean when artists answer the yeah, why? Yeah, yeah. Um, to sell work. To sell work. It's that's a a very vague but very good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's so important that there's a way to support. Well, you know, some people do it as a hobby, but some but when it's a business, mm-hmm. you you need to find a way to have the art move. It's true. Do you have ways to get? I guess. As an example, what does what does your website do? What's your why? Oh, uh, I okay. So this is the these are the steps. Yeah. Who do you want to come to your website? Mm-hmm. And you you think about them as like a category of people. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you want them to do when they're there? Yes. Why are they going to do it? Mm-hmm. And so I have two major categories, and I I tell people think about your categories, but I have collectors yes. and I have students. Yes. And so when my collectors, I want them to buy art Mm -hmm. and sign up for my newsletter. Like those are the two, because they might not like a piece that's available in this collection, but they like my style and they might get one in the next. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And, but assuming why will they buy my work? It's because I've displayed it beautifully. I've got great photographs. Mm -hmm. You can, you understand what the size is. There's no barriers to the checkout process. So when we think about the why, they'll take the action you want them to take. That ends up being your checklist of content you need to create. Yeah. That's literally the the heart of the course. So we could do it again with the students. So mm-hmm. when I have a student come to the course, so who? Student. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want somebody to learn from me. Yes. What do I want them to do? I want them to sign up for my course. Why will they do it? Because they have confidence in the uh, their ability to launch their website after taking the course. And that, when you put all the bullet points underneath it, is I've given them enough sense of my expertise in the fields. Mm-hmm. I've get, made them feel confident that I understand what their website needs are going to be. And the list goes on and on. But as you as you expand on the why will they do that thing I want them to do, it literally is the content you need to put on your website. It's delicious. <laughs> it's so good and there is some overlap in those two categories they you know sometimes your collectors become students and sometimes your students become collectors because overall they're all getting to know you as a person yes and it's it's beautiful it's not like they're two different websites that you have to make here it's it's all in one so if you are the kind of business that has very lots of multifacets, you can still have one core website and make it work yes it'll be very uniquely you yeah well <laughs> and having one and showing that you're multi-talented, uh-huh. I think it sometimes seems scary because people think that they're totally different buckets mm-hmm. of people. But people like bragging about their their teachers and their friends. Like, oh yeah. So when they say it's they they like knowing, oh she can do X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. And so I really encourage it as for as far as you could push it, keep everything on one website and clearly understand who the audiences are. Totally. 
I've heard some other things from friends where it's like, okay, I want people to come to my Patreon. Like that's the purpose of my website. Like it's a landing page and it has some images, but really the biggest button on there is go to my Patreon and become a monthly subscriber. Um, there's so many possibilities for your art business for a website that's, you, you just got to use a little of that creativity that I know you have. <laughs> Y'all are so creative. You make all these things and it's very cool. And because of going back to the beginning, I'm so deadline driven. Yeah. 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 Tell me. (laughs) So coming up next year, the course you're going to have, you can just get the content, Mm -hmm. but also I want people to join uh, cohorts and we're going to have a little sprint and we're going to have, we're going to have live sessions and you're going to get website launch buddies so we could check each other's work and review and keep each other motivated and there'll be a calendar and homework assignments, but by the end of it, people will be done. Wow. Okay, wait. Tell me about the cohorts. So what I what I hope is uh, with right now everything is uh, asynchronous. So you just mm-hmm. you just watch. It's all available. But I want people to meet other artists yes. and get some of these ideas, like you just said, yeah. Patreon. Somebody might go, Oh yeah, yeah, I want to do that too. Uh-huh. So I want to really foster some of this conversation. So these cohorts, that's the idea. You'll sign up, you'll be with the group, and we'll have live calls together. And everybody will be able to, you know, communicate with one another and share ideas. And then we'll be able to share each other's successes as we launch our websites. That's pretty nice. How big of these? How big do you think these cohorts are going to be? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know yet. I think I'd like between 10 and 20 in each one. I think that's a good number because, you know, you don't get along with everyone and never everyone's for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there is going to be some people there where you're like, oh, I really respect what you're doing and I really like what you're doing and that's going to give you ideas. So yeah, it's a good size. I, I took a course uh, during my year of education yeah. and uh, there's four of us that have stuck together since then and it's been amazing just having everybody... We talk once a week and it's like the nice little side effects of uh, being in a room full of creatives. Yes. You find, sometimes you find your people in there. I like it. And then you said a buddy system? Yeah. So I feel having somebody else look at your website before you launch is really important. And Mm -hmm. I want it to be somebody who has developed the same language around websites as you are using to build your website. So Mm -hmm. it's different than asking a partner or a friend because they will respond to your work. Yes. And they have a zillion of their own ideas, but I wanted to have these buddies. So the Mm -hmm. idea is we'll partner up and you'll have somebody who could be basically a critiquer for your work using the same structure. That's very handy. That's super handy. I I hope so. Having people (laughs) that you can trust who's who's also like in the... I guess the vein of thinking like you of like, oh, we're building websites together. Yeah. (laughs) It's going to be, I mean, I've had like small groups that I've pulled from other courses that I've done that I still talk to about those exact subjects forever. So, hey, if you need a friend to build you, to help you build your website, this could be good. This could be nice. Yeah. That's fun. They've got some deadlines, accountability. What's what's the homework going to be like? Oh, writing your artist statement, yeah. <laughs> taking taking inventory of the work you want to share, mm-hmm. and then finding a way to get it digitally. So is it a video? Is it a scan? Is it a photo? And making sure you're ready with them sized properly. So one of the things that I often find um, people stumble into as a barrier between where they are and launching their website is not being ready when they sit down. So they open a platform Mm -hmm. like, oh, shoot, I got to write this or I need to go to get more photos. And then you wander off and the project doesn't get complete. So Mm -hmm. the homework and the the structure hopefully will be by the time we sit down, you're ready to go. You might want to edit it again and change all of it, you know, another three months. But for that version, you can sit down and confidently use the tools and launch. I mean, all that homework is things that you already want to do as an artist. So it's like, <laughs> if you need someone to help direct you to there, this is going to be a great program for you. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh man, if I had a teacher who was like, okay, today we're going to learn how to archive your work. And today we're going to learn how to make sure all your photos are ready and make sure that, you know, your CV is actually able to be used by someone else and not just weirdly formatted. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like, I would have saved myself so much time. Um, I mean, because these things that, that Jennifer's teaching you are things you can figure out on your own, but 
You'll do it so much faster because you have her knowledge. And that's yeah. really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm glad. Yeah. And then, and then again, what I was saying, like, I just feel so... There, there's, there might be a time when everyone's art businesses are gigantic and they have a team of people doing this. Right. And I wish that for every single artist, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. everyone listening. I hope that happens. <laughs> but I, de- I never want somebody to be setting up for like, let's say, open studios and yeah. not be able to announce it on their website because they've hired somebody else to do it and they're busy for the next four weeks. Mm-hmm. So once we kind of go through this course and you've launched it, every next change that you have, you could do pretty quickly yeah and that's I'm hoping to just give people the tools to like once we get this whole thing done the first time then they'll feel confident to keep going that's that's pretty sweet that's pretty sweet what platforms are you teaching website building on so this is not sponsored by the way it's not sponsored (laughs) no um and I it changes based Mm -hmm. on people's needs right um the three that I love right now are uh, Webflow, if you are serious into learning tech. Yeah. Like I, like if you love Photoshop and Illustrator, go check out Webflow. It is the, it has the steepest learning curve. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, I, I've gone back and forth over the years since they launched, but right now for everybody else, Squarespace is my number one, my number one choice. That's what my website's on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's so, it's so good. And they keep evolving mm-hmm. and they keep adding things that I find people will find. I think people find helpful. It's, it's nice. Yeah. I have my email list on there. I have scheduling on there. It's quite convenient and really easy to use if you've never built a website before. Yeah. Yeah. Would recommend. Um, yeah. <laughs> I wish I had like a uh, referral link or something for Squarespace at this point. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but at some point, that would be handy. But yeah, it's it's quite, it's good. It's good. Mm-hmm. And then depending, I also, with reservations, recommend Shopify. Mm-hmm. They, they, in terms of a storytelling tool, I find is a little bit more challenging. Yeah. But depend, if you're, so you always have to go investigate what you need. And again, it might change from year to year. Mm-hmm. But a lot of folks who do different, who have different shipping requirements, Shopify has some options that some of the other platforms don't natively have. Yeah. Um. So depending on, but again, once you know what your needs are, mm-hmm. then you could go evaluate the platforms. If it's working for you. Yeah. What do you do if someone's like, okay, I already have a website and they come to you and they're like, I think this is fine, but I don't know if it's good. And maybe it's on a very much different platform. Are you going to ask them to switch platforms or? If they feel comfortable updating it, mm-hmm. then I'd say stick to it. Mm-hmm. Um, if they don't feel comfortable updating it mm-hmm. and th- a lot of people hire developers to build it for them. Mm-hmm. And if it's become, if it's very dated, then I'd say consider, consider switching. But also with respect to all of the platforms out there, they are going to come and go as well. You're not married to them. You're not married. You, it's your content. Try a different platform. Like if, like, just see if it's working. But to your example, if somebody says, I think it's working, like you think it's good, then I would just say, who do you want to come to your website? Yeah. And what do you want them to do there? And is that happening? Like, is that conversion happening? And if it is, it's great. If it's not happening, then look at why. Going back to the OG questions is definitely the key. <laughs> like, go back to the root of the problem. And I feel like if you're someone who's thinking, I don't know if my website's good, going and doing a course like this would be like great help. I, I think you have like a free PDF that people can go into. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's. I hope it's so helpful. Like, yeah. I... I want to give away as much as I can because I want everybody's sites to be as successful as possible. Um, And I feel, yeah, asking somebody else too to say like, this is what I want Mm -hmm. people to do. Mm -hmm. Would you do that on my website? We'll give you some insight. So many answers. (laughs) I've done like three really hard resets on my website in the past. And um, every time I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll ask someone new. I'm like, how fast can you buy something on my website? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, can you use it and pretend and just like get to the checkout point <laughs> and see what happens? Yeah, no, that's so helpful. Mm-hmm. And then you give them a task. Mm-hmm. And then whenever you, we get into critique, when you ask for feedback, 
I always recommend it's it's two sides of the same coin, the fee, the critique coin. Yeah. You want to know what is not working, yes. but also ask what is working. Mm-hmm. These people articulate well broken parts, but they often don't say this was really easy. So when you go to address what the, a concern was, you might throw away something that's working really well. Right. So I always say ask what works and what doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, gosh, it's good. What are some mistakes you see artists do on their websites? Oh. That- I've got the number one mistake. Already, okay. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> Not doing it. Not doing it. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. Oh. Yeah. Being like, oh, yeah, someday I'll build a website. Instagram will work for me. That's enough. No, it's not. Yeah. it's There's a level of resistance that I just want everybody to just, like, throw away. Like, mm-hmm. But people will take too long to launch, too. So a lot of people get started and then not finish it and something will trip them up. And I, I, as visual com- people communicating visually with a website, I understand why if you can't get the logo exactly right, or the buttons are slightly too big, or you wanted rounded corners, but it only had squared. I understand the resistance to launching when it's not visually w- perfect. Right. But the longer you're not launching, the longer you're not reaching your audience, and the things that are going to bother you aren't going to bother other people, but it is not your art. Mm-hmm. It is a tool f- that serves your web, your, serves your, sorry, it serves your art business. Your website serves your art business. And we have to just let some of the stuff go to say like, it's going to have an extra 50 pixels of space between here and there. I wish it didn't, but can people still, do the, the right person come to my website mm-hmm. and do the thing I want them to do? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think getting caught up is, and not launching is, I see it all the time. When you are, when you are building your own website, at what point are you like, okay, now is the time to launch? It's like not you having all the bells and whistles, but like, what are the the barest bones of things? You're like, okay, if you have this, you should just launch. One photo. Yeah. And a newsletter sign up. Amazing. <laughs> it's that simple, folks. <laughs> Your name should be there too. Your name and a newsletter sign up. Even if you don't have a clue what your newsletter is going to be, mm-hmm. start collecting those emails. Mm-hmm. It's it's so true. Even if yeah, even if you don't have a way to send an email, collect them. <laughs> yeah, right now. Yeah, and um. New website launched is one of the most opened email subject lines. Mm-hmm. Like new website, come see my new website. That email gets so much like engagement. Yeah. So collect one image. I'll just put something. Even if you don't even want to do an image, do one background color, <laughs> your name and the email sign up. <laughs> if someone's like, okay, I know I need a website. I know what I want it to do, but I have no idea what I want it to look like. What's your advice? Okay. Lean into templates. Yeah. So again, being visual people, a Mm -hmm. lot of people get excited about doing something cool and different with their website. It's just the structure. Yeah. And your artwork is what sings. So if you know you've got some idea, just lean into a template. And almost every single platform out there has something now. And they look good. They look good and your work is what separates your site from somebody else's. Um, so I that's that's my biggest bit of advice for that. That's great advice. I also love if you are someone who's like, I don't know what I want it to look like and I don't even know what good looks like, I would recommend just go look at artists that you do like and see what their websites look like. Yeah. Like the amount of times I've stolen cool things from other people's websites, I've been like, that's dope adding that to my <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> do research like shop for sign up for other people's mailing lists and see what they're doing and like that's it's such a great way um yeah yeah absolutely research yeah one artists get to change what they make and how they work and what their work looks like you know their color palettes and big small geometric like organic like, yeah don't be afraid to change your website. I think 
I think we've all heard so many things about like when Pepsi or Coke changes their logo and yes. <laughs> like there's a lot of chatter about how giant companies do this. We are not giant companies. We're Even not. if you have, let's just say you're a multi-million dollar art business. Mm -hmm. Lean into what making art and what your art is means to you and your business and allow your website to change. I think people also, I, I don't want everybody to think you have to redesign and throw stuff away every time that you want to iterate, but I also want people to feel really comfortable saying, well, maybe right now I'm doing just landscapes. Mm -hmm. And then later I just want to do uh, portraits. It's okay to have your website change and not explain or announce it. Like, I mean, you could you could say, I'm so excited about this. Like, you want to communicate what you're working on. Yes. But allow your website to serve you where you are now. And that might mean it's a big change from years ago when you were doing something else. And that's totally fine. You could even... If you're like, I, I don't do this, I don't crochet anymore, but I'm doing, you know, photography, then you could have a page that says my old work or something. But I think understanding that as an artist, you get to communicate so many different ways that you engage with the world. And it's, we're not, we're not brands in the way that a corporation is. Mm -hmm. you, you're an artist, but a lean into it rather than trying to be something that is board of directors. <laughs> I like that a lot. You're not a team of people. You're one person. And yeah. What are some things that people can do before coming to your program that would set them up for success? Oh, that's a really good question. I mean, I would say start thinking about how you communicate what you, what you do mm -hmm. and just start brainstorming. Like, like think about if you're at a dinner party and you're sitting next to somebody who doesn't know you, but mm -hmm. is a friendly ear how would you explain to them what you're working on? And what when you pull out your phone to show them, what would you show? Right. So think about it in just terms of like a conversation. Um, and I think that'll get kind of the creative juices flowing for what then needs to translate onto your website. I love that. If people were like, I'm still on the fence, I don't know if this is right for me, how should they contact you? Oh, my website. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm happy to answer any questions. Mm -hmm. So I've got a contact form up there. Uh, and any, like it's jenniferarst.com. It's A-R-Z-T. Um, ask questions ahead of time if you want it before diving in. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm, I really, I, I whatever barriers people have, we got to work to remove them, right? <laughs> my, my last question is, say someone has gone through your program and maybe some time has passed. Do you do any sort of audits or anything afterwards? I sometimes, sometimes, um, I take so many per month or you yeah. know, per quarter. So, uh, I'm always, I try very hard, but again, I always try to balance my, my art making and my teaching time. Um, uh, but hopefully this new idea with also those cohorts and having a community where people can, you know, ask other members of their cohort or a previous one, yes. they could get some reviews. That's really nice. Jennifer Arts, thanks for coming to Brushwork. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. <laughs> How else can people find you on the internet besides your website? All right. So yeah, the website and then I'm on Instagram mm -hmm. and it's Jennifer Arst underscore art. This is so fun. We did it. Yay.